Hello again everybody, it's Mark here from GreenTreeGames.com, online game store and blog. And tonight we're going to do a game overview of Mice and Mystics from Plot Hat Games. Okay. So, you've probably read about it online already. If not, you've missed out because it's awesome. So, one disclaimer here, usually we do a game overview video because we're a game store as well. So we try and show you what the game's like. Then you make the choice and we show you how it, how it plays. We don't tend to do reviews as such because we don't want to be biased if we're selling the game as well. Um, <clears throat> it's like our shop front because we've got a, an online store. This is how we show you the games. However, I'm going to make the exception today because this game is amazing. It's awesome. It's, it ticks all the boxes that I like anyway. It's a dungeon crawler. Um, it's got little mice because it's super cute, so that's a win. Um, but it's just something about it that's, it's, it's I don't know, it's like, it's like whimsical, sort of, because you're telling a story as you're playing. It's brilliant. Anyway, I'll stop gushing, and I'll tell you how to play the game. So it's a cooperative game um, for one to four players. So as a bonus, you can play it solo as well. And again, it's not just an add-on gimmick, or you can do it solo. It's rubbish, but you can do it solo. It's actually a very good solo. Um, so one to four players, dungeon crawl, mice, all good so far. So the idea is, is you have a book of missions, sort of, so, um, but it's very similar to a storybook. So each mission or quest or whatever um, is a chapter, a chapter in a book. So first of all, you've got to read the prologue so you know what the story is about, and then you start at chapter one. And you, you go through. You can't really just jump in in any chapter. You, you really have to play it all the way through because it tells a story as it goes along. Um, there's each one plays different, so it's not like any at any point it gets repetitive. You finish one chapter, you want to play the next one straight away. You want to know what comes next. You want to know what what awesome little rules there are or, or how the story evolves. So that's good. I won't show you all of it, obviously. I don't want to spoil anything. Um, one thing I will say about this book is at the beginning it tells you some cards to take out of the search deck. Um, so I missed that the first time when I pulled them and I thought, oh these are interesting cards. So remember that if you're playing it, pull those cards out first, it's quite important. Um, so um, we'll take you other components. So here we've got um, the story control board, we've got the search cards, we've got the encounter cards, which I'll show you in a second, super easy. Here we've got um, like uh, the progress through the mission. The, the further this goes along, the closer you are to the end of the game. If you get to the end and you've not completed your objective, it's game over. So it's important. That, that's the race against time element. Um, so we'll come over to look at, look at the heroes. So there's six possible mice in the game. You pick four. Some missions you've got to pick specific ones. Um, anybody that's pay played any of these kinds of game games before, it'll be, it'll be familiar. You've got um, look at this Maginos up here. You've got attack, defense, any dash or roll, lore for casting spells. Your move, any powers that you've got, your health, and then your starting equipment. And you've also got a starting ability here. Um, you all get to choose one to begin with, and then as you progress, as you get better, you can level up and get more abilities. But we'll look about, we'll look at those when they're going to make more sense. I think. So, first thing that we do, first tile that you land on, um, we have to decide what monsters we're going to see. Okay, now this tile, this is where we start. I won't spoil the prologue entirely, but you start off in a in a cell. Um, you were a human and you were shrunk to mice form because you've got to try and escape and there's a mouse you can go through the great. So that's good. Um, so this is a clever bit. All of these tiles are double sided. One tile represents underground and the other represents overground. So this is the guard room. Once we've finished in the guard room and once we try and escape down the great, we then go to the tunnels. And you can see there's the light coming down from the guard room um, and then we're in the sewers and then we're going to try and progress once we go over here okay we can go up the ladder if we go up the ladder we then go to the kitchen see it's 
Brilliant. Very, 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 very well thought out. So you, it doesn't take up tons of room because all the game is, is just tie, uh, tied to these tiles. So anyway, again, enough gushing, sorry. So we'll start off, we've been shrunk down to mouse size um, and we've got to escape from the cell. So at the same time, the baddies that are in this castle that don't want us to escape, again it's in the prologue, I won't spoil it for you, um, and they want to try and stop us. So there's going to be unpleasant things in this cell. So what we do, every tile you land on, as soon as you land on it, you pull an encounter card and this will see what baddies are in there. And if you look at the encounter card, we've got page numbers and a surge at the bottom. So the page number is how far along we are on that, that um, track on the storyboard. So we're only at page one, things haven't got too desperate yet. Five roaches, that's not great. So, five roaches. So what we do is we get five roaches and then we put them on the tile. Now, wherever you see these little feet, this is where baddies start. Now, there are certain rules. If these weren't ranged, they go as far away as possible. If they, they were the big guys, we put them as close as possible. Any medium people, you just scatter them about. You go sort of dish them out evenly. Or, well, more or less, it's, it's up to you. So we go, baddies placed. Right. Then what we do is we're going to decide who does what or when. So we have initiative cards. So we have one for the roaches, and then we get one for each of the people, each of the little mess. Can find them all. Okay, so one for each on the board. And we shuffle them. And then we dish them out over here. Oh, over. So, and this is in initiative order. Nez first. He's always first for some reason. But he's for me anyway. Roaches, Tilda, Maginos, or Maginos, or however you say that. And Filch. <coughs> so, that's the order of play. So what we'll do is we'll step through a few turns because it's 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 that quick. We could probably do this combat. I can show you in its entirety. So first of all, um, it's Nessie's turn first. He's at the top. You can do the following. You can move and do one of the following. You can scurry, which is more of a move. You can fight if you're adjacent to in the same square as the bad guy. Um, you can uh, search if there's no bodies on the board. You can recover if you've been webbed or whatever, again, um, or you can explore if you're right at the edge of the board. Most of the time you'll be fighting though, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, so let's get cracking. So Nez, we're going to have to snap some stuff, basically. Before you can advance to the next portion of the board, you've got to kill everything on the tile. So what we'll do is, we'll want to move him. So if you look at Nez, his move is one. That means I can move one space, which is a bit dire, really. But it's not all bad, because when you move, you also get to roll a dice. A special custom dice for my mystics. So we roll the dice. And on the dice, is a little, there's a little number on every side as well as all the symbols. So that's a three. So I can move four spaces. My move will one, plus the three. So I will go. Now, movement. All the boards are higgledy-piggledy. There's no definite squares. So the rule is... So long as your base can touch or straddle both squares, you can move across it. So in theory, say I'm on that square, oh, say I'm on that square. Because the bases touch that square and that square, that could be a one. So it's a clever way of having a really nice board, and really well drawn, not just a grid, and you can move wherever you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one, two, I'm going to go and smack one of these cockroaches. Now, a square can only have four miniatures in at any one time, so I'm okay with doing that. Now, as it stands, I've moved into there, but I can only move back out again if there's as many of my guys as there is baddies. So there I could move out. I've sort of trapped myself there, because there's more of them than me. But it's not a problem, because I'm rock hard, and I've got a massive hammer. So, now... Very quickly, let's come back over to all these character cards. Now, I don't want to step you through every one and take ages, but obviously, all the different weapons and the different cards have different rules and they all play off against each other So you, to try and maximise the strategy. So, my guy, um, if I'm in the same space as the enemy, um, two seconds, I can't read upside down. 
Yes, I can add. I can add two. Okay, sorry. So, if I'm in the same space, I get to um, add two for having a hammer because there's a little plus two up there to my fighting. And if you look up here, um, my fighting is two. So I can roll four dice all told. Four dice. So, I roll a dice and I'm after getting little swords. So I've got two swords, two hits. Good stuff. Okay. Now the cockroaches um, uh, on the little uh, initiative track, it tells you what dice to roll. And they roll one. So I've killed it anyway, but I'm going to roll. I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, so in theory, I got two swords, so he would have to roll something with a shield on to block it. Now, I rolled two. Even if he rolled one, one would still get through and I would have killed him, so he's dead. But he rolled some cheese. This is super important. So when the baddie rolls a cheese, you take a cheese counter and you put it on the cheese wheel, the cheese wheel of doom, okay? Now, we'll come back to that in a second. Let's fly back over here. So, he rolled the cheese, and, uh, and he didn't defend, so I killed him. Yay! All good. Now, when I did my roll, if I'd have rolled the cheese, I'd have got some cheese as well, which I put on my card. So, I'll sip over to my card. Cheese is super important. You need cheese to fire off your abilities. So my ability card here, I think if I use it, I can add two dice to my defense or something. All the abilities do awesome things, but you need cheese to do it. And for other things, but I'll tell you that later. So, I've killed something. Yay! And that's that turn over and done with. So now it's the Roach's turn. As described here on the initiative track. Um, also super on the initiative track, it's got everybody's values. Um, attacking and hitting and health, so that's super handy. So roaches. Now, when it's the bad guy's turn, because it's a cooperative game, there's no games master. Um, um, we follow a set of rules, and the rules are just move as close as they can and attack the mice. So we'll go around and we'll do this roach first, and we roll the dice. Whatever we get on the movement, that's what they move. So it's really simple. So one. Cheese doesn't matter for moving, it's just if he's hitting. One, two. One, two, three. This guy's already in the same space, so he can attack. Roaches get two to attack. Oh! Two swords. Nez's defence isn't great, he only has a one. So he's going to roll one. Oh, so I've got one shield against two swords, so one hit got through, so on his card we put a heart. I'm okay with one, if I get four I've been captured, now I'm not dead, all it means is um, I cut, I've, I'm taking off the tile for, for, for this for this encounter, um, so just just to show you in theory what happens, say, say, say that's the last one, say I'm all dead, all everything's gone, any equipment I have um, equipped, that would go, I lose all my cheese and I get taken off the board and I get put here. Um, the other thing that happens if you were to die, and I'm rushing through things a little bit, but the other thing that would happen if you were to die is come over here, this would advance forward one, so that would be bad. So you don't want to die because not only do you get captured and you're out until the next tile, but this advances, and the further this advances, the further you get to the end where you lose the game. Also, the higher this goes up, if you look on the encounter card, the bigger and harder baddies you're going to encounter. So, moral of the story is, don't die, pretty much. So anyway, I'm not dead, it's good news, I'm back there. Um, so, next it would be Tilda, so let's, 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 do, a, let's do a full turn. So where's Tilda? Tilda has a movement of two, um, so let's move her up here and we'll get this guy. So I'll roll anyway. I've got loads one, two, so I'll attack. Tilda has a mace, which um, doesn't add anything, so we just do the normal value there, what's that's two. She does have a special ability on her mace, her starting mace. Um, when she attacks, she can add one to this mace's battle. Each wounded mouse on the same 
space. Now you see, if I'd have been really clever, I'd have probably moved her over here because he's wounded. But obviously I'm not. So we'll just we'll just do it as is. So till we get some cheese. And she's done, she's hit with one. So the roach. Defends, no shield, roach dead. See? Super quick. Um Maginos or Maginos, the wizard. He can do three and his movement is two, so we can do five. So he's gonna go. Well he's gonna stay with you and he's gonna show you how to do ranged combat. Because his staff can can fire at, at a distance. Now you can there's no range limit, you can shoot anything you can see. The only thing problem is if is anything blocking the way that you can't see, but everything's open here, nothing's blocking the line of sight. He can roll two dice, and when you're doing range combat, you need those. Oh he's failed, but he got some cheese. Put the cheese on. Super important cheese. So he failed. Um, now he can still move, so let's move him up to Tilda. And then Filch. Filch has lots of um, cunning abilities. Um, one of them is he can put an extra weapon in his tail and attack with that as well, but none of that applies to this. So we'll just move him up. So he'll roll, plus three is movement, which is five. So I've got one, two, three. Now you can attack just being adjacent, you don't have to be in the same space, but if you're in the same space, it can lock people down. If you fill a square up, then nobody else can come into it, so there are reasons for moving into the same space. So he's going to roll two. Uh, he got one, so the roach got it. gets a shield, so the roach is still alive. And that's the end of the first turn. So that's a turn! Pretty quick, eh? And, you know, Initially, that would probably, um, it doesn't take too long to, to, to move through it. Because it's quick, everybody's having a turn and nobody's bored and everybody's looking at the board at the same time getting involved. So let's skip ahead. Let's say we've killed all the roaches. Um, and they're all dead. So when you kill the last roach, it's quite important because um, at the end of your round, if all of the monsters are dead and you're loitering on this square, there's a mechanic that sort of pushes you along. So say, say, uh, say Tilda, who's there, killed the last roach. So then Magnus, who's turning his next, there's no monsters on the board, so he can search if he wants to. That's one of the things you can do with no monsters on. So to search, super simple, you roll a dice, if you get a little star on it, I'll show you. If you get a little star on it, it means you've succeeded. Those stars are used for most things where success isn't guaranteed. So I rolled a star and I, it succeeded. So this is the search deck, which is massive by the way, loads of cards. So what did you get? A cheese cash bonus. Um, play immediately each mouse on the same tile as the mouse that drew this. Card receives one cheese! So that would be good. Whilst you're here, let's show you some of the other search cards that you can get. Not speaking. So there's equipment, okay. Um, there's tricks that are things you can hold on to and play at a later date for, for an advantage. There's bad things that can happen. Um, as well as personal equipment like weapons, there's also party equipment like a great one. But what am I looking for? The awesome. Look at all the cards, there's, there's loads and loads and loads of awesome things, I can't find it. There's one is like a, a hook and thread, so you can use it to climb up on to tables, and there's loads of stuff. So anyway, okay, let's say that Magnus got a shield, he pulled a shield, he successfully searched and he pulled a shield. Now what happens is, um, he, that would then go into his pack, that each creature um, can have three things in his pack, so he's Put it face down, so you know it's not equipped, it's in your backpack. Now one thing we didn't cover is, as well as all the other things you can do, there's some free actions you can take. You can only do it once per turn, but it's things you can do as well as move um, and everything else. So on, on um, actually that's the wrong person, on Magnus' turn, 
Um, he, he searched and got that. Now, as a free action, if he's in the same space or an adjacent space, he can share this card with somebody else because it's of no use to him. You can also share cheese if you like. So he's going to give that, let's see, it's Warrior or Healer. So he's going to give that to Tilda because she's in the same space. That's his turn. Now, on her turn, as her free action, she can equip that and she can start to use it. And if you look on the card, there's little areas to show you what hand to use so that goes in that hand that goes in that hand that's fine so she couldn't use something two-handed and a shield that makes sense okay um so, something you can also do as a free action is if your little character if your little mouse has got six cheeses all saved up you can swap those six cheeses for an ability card an extra one you can rummage through and find one so that's like leveling up essentially so cheese is super important. So yeah, so free actions, you can um, swap cheese and equipment with people, um, you can equip things and you can also level up. Okay. So anyway, I digressed again. Um, so, um, Magnus searched, he got some equipment. It's now Filch's turn. So Filch can either um, explore, because everybody's dead and is at the exit, the great, he can either explore or he can search. The problem is, if he searches, he's going to go past the end and back to the top. And whenever that happens and there's no minions on the board, another piece of cheese goes on the wheel. That's bad. So that's something you've got to weigh up whether or not that one that's happened. Now that's bad because when this fills up to six cheeses, cheeses, cheese, when this fills up to six cheese, Either by the baddies rolling cheese when they attack, or by waiting too long once all the minions are dead. Once that gets to there, bad things happen. They all come off. Unless the chapter say, unless the mission instructions say otherwise, this surge monster happens. It only happens once per tile, but it's not good. So say I dallied and it all filled up, a centipede would appear, which isn't good. But not only that, it advances the time count for a long run. So waiting around, searching, isn't always the best thing to do because um, time ticks on and the game makes you, it pushes you forward. Other cooperative games have got similar mechanics, um, but this feels the most elegant because it works really well. Also, when you do do a search, and this is a little trick I use, so you think, when you do do a search, you roll a dice you can only have one successful search per tile. So what I do is if somebody's had a successful search, I put that dice on their card so I know that they've already successfully searched. So that when you come back round, you don't do it again and everybody can search again. <sighs> Did all that without breathing, I think. So, um, surges, big monsters, cheese. That covers most of the basics. So what would happen here, so that surge didn't happen, there was only one piece of cheese there. It was just an example. So on Filch's turn, he's going to say, no, I'm not going to search, be crazy. We don't want any more cheese. We don't want to advance the time. I'm going to explore. So we take all the mice. We flip it over. We put them on the entry tile. At square, pull another encounter, look where we're up to, in theory nobody died and there was no surgery so it's still be page one which is good, so page one, three rats, one two three, distribute them on the little feet and away you go, you do it all again, um, obviously there's more tricky rules in there, not tricky but there's, there's lots of depth to the game. For example, this is water. Um, you've got to try and roll to get in and out of water. If you end your turn in water, you get pushed down by the current. And if you get pushed off the board, you get captured. Um, so all the tiles have got things going on, things happening. Um, some of the encounters say mouse traps. If it says mouse traps, if you're in a tile, we say you're in this tile with crosses on, you put mouse traps down. You've got to try and dodge them to get past them. You've got to roll a dice and see if you 
see if you might work your right way past them. Um, the search deck is crammed full of all kind of different pieces of equipment that interact with each other and let you do crazy things. So I can't obviously I can't just sit here and give you all those details. That's part of the fun, cracking it open and then looking at all the cars and seeing what all the guys do. So as a game overview, that's it. Those are the rules. That's how you play the game. Um, as a game review, it's awesome. I hope I get that across to you. Um, the theming. Um, and just how quick it is, it all gels really, really well. Um, apparently, there's going to be future expansion packs with more, um, more story books, more little my heroes. Um, so there's lots more to come as well. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Um, uh, come and look on the website. This is on the website currently to buy. Um, again, I know it sounds like I'm being biased, but there you go. Um, uh, come and have a look at our forum, say hello there, come and look at our Facebook and our Twitter, we do more of these videos, we've got a lot already on the channel, um, try and get involved as much as we can, um, and that's it for now, so thank you for watching, bye bye.